restoration video. Uh, in this video, we're basically showcasing disassembling uh, what is a La San Marco series uh, two group semi auto machine. And in this picture uh, and video series that we have, a customer had brought us this machine for restoration. Uh, it was in pretty bad disrepair in general and needed a lot of work, as most every single one of them do. Uh, here in this video, we're pretty much just showing you some of the basics of how we refurbish our machines and what the process is in stripping them. Uh, it's a pretty lengthy process. It can take hours and hours and hours depending on how stubborn the machine is, how rusty the machine is, and how angry the machine is in general. Um, at this point we're removing the boiler end plate bolts. You can see there to the left. Um, and then once we have the boiler end plate bolts off, we remove the element bolts and out comes the element they're all in pretty poor shape, typically needing replacement regardless. Um, we do tend to ohm all the meters just to verify that they're toast, but in most cases they are below spec and need to be replaced. Some of the other process here that has not been showcased in this video is removing the roof heads, uh, removing the external panels and body parts. We did that prior to the video to get people to see a little more of the meat uh, of the process here. As you can tell, we're drilling at this point and removing the uh, entire harness mount plate assembly. On these old machines, they had a, a nice hinge that you could swing it out and swing it in. Uh, and so we have to drill those rivets out. And uh, it's quite a process just to get all this stuff disconnected in the first place. And also have to pull it from the hook. So here we're just removing those bolts, uh, the rivet heads rather. And we're going to take the entire harness out and with us to the cleanup table. We typically check through the harness uh, pretty thoroughly and make sure there's no issues and terminals that need to be replaced after the cleanup. Here we're just removing all the uh, power cables, as you can see. We're going to remove the pressure stat assembly here, and off it comes. All of it intact with one piece, including the trigger box, goes away uh, for cleanup and testing later on. Some of the other things we're going to go through in this video uh, is showing you how we remove the heat exchangers internally on these machines. Uh, it can be quite a process, but um, as you see here, we've got most everything stripped away. We have the boilerplate that was about to come off. Again, we've already pulled the element out. Prior to this machine being brought to the paint shop, we have to strip it to the frame, obviously, uh, and remove every single nut and bolt from the frame. So we basically have a lot of work to do. Here you can see we removed the end plate and scooped out some garbage for you. See that? It's pretty foul. Uh, that's a lot of scale and minerals uh, and milk that was built up in that machine. We're going to remove the uh, subsection of basically all the copper pipettes that lead into uh, manual fill valve assembly here. pieces are frozen over and need to be kind of get apart once we do these restorations. So we've time lapsed it a little here for you so you don't have to suffer through the entirety uh, as we did. And we'll separate all these valves and all these components. Uh, you can see the auto pool cleaning right there. And all of these components are going to go into an acid dip. Uh, we usually use muriatic acid or citric to clean them. And that gets all the organic material out of the lines inside and out. We've gone ahead and removed most of the copper pipettes here to separate everything. Uh, and we'll continue to work on that section. And one of the primary auto 
inside of the exchangers are, are inside the boiler, and they can be kind of dirty, and they get filled up with crud. We're going to show you a breakdown here of a heat exchanger now, which is a rather large size. We have to uh, break these through. Sometimes the heat exchangers fail during disassembly. So we've got a heat exchanger full and a surrounding water tube. And the water tube will lead up to the heat itself. So here we're going to go ahead and remove the exchanger. You can't see it, uh, but we've loosened it up. And we're taking the top union off, and out will come the entire exchanger. And some of these get deformed. Uh, some of them get damaged from removal. Some of them already have holes in them. And these sand markers, you can see this one's a little off on it here. But uh, these can be kind of tedious. There's quite a few seals involved with the sand markers design and a bunch of junk inside, as you can see. We're going to go ahead and work on the second one now. This is the two groups. It has two exchangers. If it was a three, it would have two. If it was a one, it would have one. If our machines have crusted in exchangers, if the nickel plating is worn off uh, during the disassembly process, we discover that it's out of spec, we replace the exchanger. It's pretty common that we do. Some of them just don't make it past 10 or 15 years. Here are the feed tubes to the group heads. quite a bit of work that goes into disassembling one of these machines. Uh, 